John, congratulations. Nice to have you here on High Heat. How are you doing today, pal? Okay? I am doing fantastic. Thank you so much. Longtime fan of yours. You got it. There you go. Good to have you with us here. Boy, I'll tell you, 15 years, minor league baseball, you have uh, paid your dues. It's good to see you get a chance. Give me some thoughts on this long uh, career you've had here getting to the Reds broadcast booth. Fire away. Uh, I think the biggest thing is you feel like it's this long reaching goal. You're constantly searching for something that you know is attainable, that you know is possible. But you also have to realize it's really unlikely, bordering on impossible. And with every passing year, it, it feels more distant. Even as you grow closer to it, you feel like it's farther away. And uh, it, there's still a disconnect and a misfire in my brain. It, it doesn't feel like it's here. It doesn't feel like it's real, probably until the first game. And I'm sure you did other things uh, these, with these minor league teams uh, besides the 15-hour bus trip in the middle of nowhere at night. I'm sure you sold advertising. I'm sure you worked with the ball club before the game started. I've been down that path with these minor league broadcasters. You got to do a lot of other things than just do the ball games. John, how about that for a sec? Let me hear. Yeah, you got to wear a lot of hats. You know, you got to double as the PR guy. You're selling boards in the outfield and spots on the radio broadcast. You're helping to clean up the press box in the stadium. You're on the tarp crew. You have to have a whole separate set of clothes to be ready to roll the tarp out. The, the full-time grounds crew is usually a one- or two-person operation, and everything is always all hands on deck. And a lot of other sports, too, I like to see. A lot of, you know, women's college basketball, men's college basketball, uh, NBA, NFL, all things on Westwood One. you got a good resume with the other sports, too, John. Thoughts there? Yeah, I think that helps inform everything. You know, I, I love all sports. I, I always have. You know, when I was a kid, I can remember being five years old asking my mom, is it possible to be a a professional baseball, football, basketball, and hockey player. Can the calendars coincide? Has anyone done that? Uh, but by the time I was six, I realized I was a terrible athlete. <laughs> I, had, I had no chance of actually achieving that. But uh, it was always built toward the goal of, of trying to call games for a team, and ideally in baseball, which was my first love. And now uh, you grew up, I'm sure, as a Yankee or a Met fan. You grew up in Jersey, John, so you probably love the Yankees and the Mets, correct? Indeed, yeah. My, my family's all from the Highbridge area of the Bronx, a few blocks away from Yankee Stadium. Uh, so my dad was a season ticket holder in 77 and 78. My first childhood memory is being on my dad's shoulders. Uh, Rigetti's no-hitter when he struck out Wade Boggs, and I was crisply sunburnt and uh, really tired. And years later, my hitting coach my first year in AAA was the guy who caught that game, Butch Weiniger. Well, how about that? Good story. 83, I believe, that gets you through that uh, no hitter on July 4th with Mel Allen in the booth, if I'm not mistaken. And now you do the Reds, and they have a long, illustrious uh, crew of broadcasters with Michaels and Brenneman. Go back to Wade Hoyt. So you got a lot of guys there. You're following some big footsteps in Cincinnati there. John Thoughts, go ahead. Yeah, I think that's that's part of the the call and the challenge of the job is there's a tremendous standard that's been there, you know, for the franchise. The, the literal start of professional baseball comes with the Reds, and they have some iconic uh, voices that have called those moments, the iconic players that have worn that uniform. Uh, the odds of getting a major league job, period, are incredibly difficult. And the odds to do it at a place, you know, like Cincinnati with the Reds uh, are, are even more challenging. And, and to me, that's the greatest challenge that, that I'll face is the Reds fan is going to know way more than I will for a long time, probably for the entirety of my run. I, I hope to be there for 40 years, and I'm going to meet people that will know things firsthand from experience that I won't. And, uh, and I think that's fun. The, the nerdy prep reading and understanding the history, I sometimes find even more fun than calling the game itself, and I love calling the game. And uh, this is a great opportunity to just dive headfirst in and just try to soak up as much as I can. Oh, 100%. It's a great organization. I heard with the Cincinnati fan, too, take a little while to get embraced, but once you are embraced, you are for life. So there's going to be a little trial and error. Oh, who's this guy from New York who's going to do my Reds? And once they realize you know what's going on, you'll be part of their family for the next, as you said, 30, 40 years, John. I'm sure you've heard the same thing. Let me get some thoughts there. Yeah, and I, I think that's what baseball is, right? You know, baseball is every day. That's its greatest strength. That's its greatest joy. And I, I think you have the same relationship in clubhouses with players. You know, nobody accepts you right away. You need to put in the work. You need to be there. You need to be there every day, giving your A effort. And I, I think if you deliver to the best of your ability, if you're prepared, if you're in the moment, and if you're having fun, that translates, that resonates. People connect with that. That's what they want. They want escapism. 
They, they want a chance to just dip into something other than the grind of the everyday. And that's what makes baseball wonderful. It's always there for you. And a little bit of an adjustment to this first year. Who knows if the broadcasters are going to be allowed to travel on the road. So there is a chance, maybe it's already been decided, that from a television perspective, you might do in the road games from the other team's cameras, the opponent's cameras and their angles, from the press box at Great American Ballpark. John, I'm sure you've thought about that. That's an adjustment. Thoughts there? Uh, well, it's helped a little bit that my work nationally on television, I've done a decent number of games off monitors in the last year due to COVID. And uh, so I've learned a few tricks along the way on how to try to stay on the play, but be a little bit behind it as well, uh, able to process looking at a lot of monitors at once. But yeah, uh, to me, that, that is a big challenge. And the biggest challenge is not having that face-to-face -face time with players, not being able to physically be in the clubhouse, down, down on the field during batting practice, because that's where the relationships are forged. Uh, and I, I think that's probably going to be the reality across baseball, at least at the start. Uh, but many that I speak to believe that there is a chance before the season is over, we might have some kind of normalcy and, and life on the road again. I'm going to keep our fingers crossed on that. John, congratulations. Good to see you, guy. Toil for so long. Got a big break for you. You'll do well there. Thanks for a couple minutes. Good luck. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.